All right, this is going to be a quick explainer for the 11th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So we want to understand where it came from, why it was added. This is the first amendment added after the Bill of Rights, right? The Bill of Rights were the first 10 amendments added right as the Constitution was being ratified. And then things had gone along for a few years, and this was the first new change that the, the government moved forward with. And it kind of deals with federalism, and we'll, we'll see how that kind of applies as we go along. If we look at the actual text of the amendment, it says, The judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity, commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state, or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. Okay, we got a lot of words in there that it's not the clearest, so let's kind of break that down. If we're going in simple terms, it means a person cannot sue the state of Michigan or Ohio or Indiana, for example. They cannot sue that state in federal court without that state's consent. So this affects citizens of other states and also foreign citizens. And you might be thinking, why does that need to be clarified? Again, kind of keep in mind the idea of federalism. We're talking about suing a state in a federal court system and then how that might apply. So let's go back. This is, we're after the American Revolution, but wars are very expensive. So the, the U.S. government was in a lot of debt because of the American Revolution. And so different state governments also had different debts and they were facing lawsuits. So this case comes along, Chisholm v. Georgia. And the Supreme Court basically ruled saying that this citizen of South Carolina was allowed to sue the state of Georgia over this war debt and, and could do that in a federal court. Well, states kind of freaked out because they were saying, well, this is kind of taking away the idea of state sovereignty. Again, at the time, remember, we had a stronger federal government under the Constitution, but they still wanted state governments to really retain a lot of power. And so they were worried that this kind of ability for federal courts to hear cases where you could bring a state you know, to the court and, and sue them, this would kind of undermine that state's power and sovereignty or, or authority. So the states got together and then this was, was pushed for in Congress to, to pass this amendment. So the impact of this amendment is that it protects or, or reinforces state sovereignty or state authority. And so it protects states from certain legal actions, kind of helped rebalance the balance of power between the federal and state levels of government at that time and just kind of sets up a legal precedent moving forward. It basically was there to overrule Chisholm v. Georgia. It was, the amendment was a reaction to that Supreme Court decision. And it's key to keep in mind that the Supreme Court kind of has the final say in a lot of these constitutional questions. And so if you want to override or overrule a Supreme Court decision, one of the main ways you could do that would be adding an amendment to the Constitution. So now the Constitution specifically says, no, this is how things will work. So this isn't an amendment that comes up a ton. I honestly don't think you'll, you're not likely to see it on the state test. I'm not sure, but we wanted to maybe run through that with you because it does reinforce that idea of federalism. And just as, as a good example of how amendments are going to work moving forward as a reaction to certain things that are happening in the country.